New Mexico faces the prospect of becoming the United States' temporary nuclear fuel storage facility, setting off a battle between the economic benefits of doing so and concerns over the health, safety, and environment. In the United States, nuclear energy provides around one-fifth of the nation's electricity. However, with that comes thousands of metric tons of spent nuclear fuel and no long-term storage solution in sight. And at the heart of this controversy is New Mexico, a state grappling with the prospect of becoming the nation's temporary nuclear fuel storage facility. And the stakes are, to be fair, pretty big. On the one side, there is a promise of an economic boom in job creation, and at least a temporary solution to the nation's nuclear storage. Holtec International, a prominent nuclear energy company, has proposed a multi-billion dollar site to be built in southeastern New Mexico to store the temporary fuel. And on the other side, we have the New Mexico state government, which fears the environmental, health, and safety repercussions of becoming the nation's nuclear storage facility. And this is just the latest in an ongoing fight. So let's dive in and see if this small site in New Mexico can become the nation's first temporary storage site for spent nuclear fuel. The Consolidated Interim Storage Facility, or CISF, is the first of its kind in the United States, which at this point has no long-term storage facility and instead has been storing the spent nuclear fuel at the individual sites that have produced it. While Holtec's facility is not a permanent solution, it does provide the possibility that the individual commercial nuclear power plant sites across the country could transfer their spent nuclear fuel to the New Mexico desert, something that could alleviate the burden of the individual sites having to store the spent nuclear fuel. The site in Lea and Eddy County is on land provided by the Regional Economic Development Authority, the Eddy Lea Energy Alliance. Holtec is no stranger to spent nuclear fuel, being one of the largest vendors in this area in the United States. The initial capacity for the facility would be up to 8,680 metric tons of used uranium fuel stored in 500 canisters. Plans for future expansion could include up to 10,000 canisters over the next six decades. However, the initial license is only for 40 years. Thus, any future expansion beyond the initial 500 canisters will require Holtec to go back to the US NRC with a request for a license amendment. In the meantime, though, the site aims to offer a temporary, centralized storage facility for used nuclear fuel until a permanent facility can be established. It should be noted that this is the same storage facility that is used at the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, which has a much more difficult environment with seawater nearby. The canisters containing the used nuclear fuel are placed underground, which improves their resistance to any kind of natural or unnatural interference. In fact, the nearby mining operations are expected to be completely uninterrupted. However, New Mexico's governor, Michelle Grisham, signed into law in March 2023 legislation that required the state approval before any spent nuclear fuel could be stored in the state, effectively giving them veto power over any such projects. And this is a bold move, with a state challenging long-standing federal authority over nuclear safety matters. New Mexico says that its resistance is fueled by concerns that the state will become the nation's nuclear dumping ground. The governor, state representatives, and multiple environmental groups have all voiced strong opposition to the project. The governor and New Mexico's congressional delegation fear that the lack of a long-term storage facility in the United States for spent nuclear fuel means that the temporary facility could become a permanent storage site, leaving New Mexico with the burden of storing all of the spent nuclear fuel for the long term. And environmental activists from groups like the Nuclear Issues Study Group have protested the project, saying the storing of spent nuclear fuel poses significant environmental and health and safety risks. The state legislature and vocal opposition from such prominent members of the New Mexico government highlights the conflict between the state and the federal authority in this area, and really underscores the long-term need for storage of spent nuclear fuel in the US. New Mexico actually already has a high-level waste storage facility at the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, which holds high-level nuclear waste from the nation's nuclear weapons program. However, the Holtec effort is a private project, which means the state has much greater control over the permitting and activities that are going on there, especially if they relate to people in the environment. So despite the state's best efforts to prevent the facility from going forward, the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission in March granted the license to Holtec to build and operate the facility for the next 40 years. And this, of course, has caused a conflict between the state of New Mexico and the federal government on the jurisdiction and authority of nuclear safety. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is responsible for ensuring the safe use of radioactive materials and has the authority to issue licenses based on facilities that meet its safety requirements. Its authority stems from two main legislations, the Atomic Energy Act of 1954 and subsequently the Energy Reorganization Act of 1974. The act requires that civilian uses of nuclear materials and facilities be licensed, and it empowers the NRC to establish by rule or order and to enforce such standards to govern those as the Commission may deem necessary necessary or desirable in order to protect the health and safety and minimize the danger to life or property. 
Thus, when New Mexico passed legislation in March 2023 to require consent before any spent nuclear fuel was transferred into the state, they were not directly challenging the US NRC's authority over nuclear safety matters. Rather, they were trying to protect their own state's rights and interests. So this conflict really highlights the delicate balance between the federal government and state's rights as far as US governance goes. And while federal law typically supersedes state law in matters of nuclear safety, this issue tests the ability of states to be able to prevent projects that already have federal approval. The situation is likely to lead to legal challenges and may set a precedent for future similar situations. Spent nuclear fuel poses serious environmental and health risks due to its ionizing radiation if it is not managed properly. Usually it can only be handled by machines and people need to be physically protected from it, usually by steel and concrete. Critics argue that transportation of spent nuclear fuel, especially from East Coast cities, is fraught with risks, especially considering the recent railway accidents in Ohio. Watchdog groups such as Beyond Nuclear have expressed concerns about the structural integrity of the transportation infrastructure, particularly of railroads. They suggest that transporting such heavy and dangerous loads could lead to derailments, leading to the risk of radiation release. However, Holtec International insists that the casks used in transportation and storage are safe, and that even if there was a derailment, there would not be any radiation release. And rightly so. The US has transported thousands of canisters of nuclear fuel over the years, and there has never been an accident that resulted in injury, death, or sickness from radiation. On the economic side of things, the project represents a significant investment. Holtec has already invested over $80 million in the application process alone. The construction and operation of the facility could bring thousands of jobs to the area, an increase in local spending. And at the national level, the US government already spends billions of dollars reimbursing the individual sites for the storage of the spent nuclear fuel. A centralized temporary storage site could reduce these costs over time. And as we've mentioned, the US currently lacks a long-term storage facility for spent nuclear fuel, which is growing at a rate of around 2,000 metric tons per year. The decision to license the temporary facility in New Mexico could set a precedent, however, shifting the responsibility from the federal government to the individual states. And as we've seen the conflict between New Mexico and the federal government, it raises the questions about what is the balance of power between the federal government and the states on nuclear safety matters. The case highlights the urgent need for a comprehensive nuclear waste policy within the United States, which could include a mix of long-term storage, intermediate storage, and even recycling. In response to the NRC's decision, the state's government, led by Michelle Grisham and the state's congressional delegation, is planning to challenge the project in court, saying that she will use every tool in her toolbox to block attempts to build interim storage of nuclear waste in her state. I think other states need to step up. I think other solutions need to step up. The main argument is that the legislation passed by the state in March 2023 bans the storage of spent nuclear fuel in the state without consent. New Mexico may also have other options through its state-controlled environmental controls and safety standards. The project will still need sign-off from those agencies before construction and operation can begin. For example, the New Mexico Environment Department has some jurisdiction over the Department of Energy sites, including the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant. Holtec, on the other hand, asserts that any state-level legislation is preempted by federal law, thus implying that they expect to win any kind of legal challenge. However, if New Mexico's legal battle is successful, it could halt the project entirely or significantly delay its implementation. And this would represent a substantial victory for states' rights in the area of nuclear safety regulation. However, if Holtec prevails, then it reaffirms the federal government's authority on nuclear safety matters, which could then set the precedent and pave the way for other projects in other states. This legal battle between Holtec and New Mexico represents a pivotal moment in US nuclear energy. Although there are a lot of specific details about this site in New Mexico and the battle with Holtec, it underscores the broader ongoing debate about how to safely and efficiently manage the nation's growing stockpile of spent nuclear fuel. Remember, this is not a permanent solution. And the outcome of this case could set a precedent for future nuclear waste projects, influencing the policy of the country for years to come. So what do you think? How do you see the situation in New Mexico playing out? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.